We're going to read the first five verses of this chapter, Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 60, 1 through 5. And let's all stand out of respect to God's word. Follow along with me as I read this, these five verses. The Bible says here, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar. Thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. Thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the word of God as we talk about this truth this morning. Help us to listen carefully to what you have to say to us. Um, Lord, you have many things to say through our life, and this is just one more thing you want to talk to us about, and to help us to, to do your word as we hear it this morning. Pray for the preacher downstairs, help the young people listen to what he has to say, and decide they're going to do what you're talking to them about this morning also. <clears throat> Please work in every heart here, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hey, Angela, being so willing to listen to the voice lessons I've given her all these years, you're a blessing. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for that. That's a blessing. I love that song. I love that song. There's a lot of junk being written nowadays by so-called Christian songwriters, but that proves to me that there's still people are still capable of writing good, godly songs. And that's just one of them right there. It's written by a lady by the name of Abigail Miller. Um, but what a great truth there it, there is in that song. I hope you listened to it, enjoyed it, and I'm glad I get to go in. And I'll tell you, when I go in, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing as loud as I can when I get there because I'm going to be excited. Nothing's going to hold back my excitement about being in that wonderful place Jesus made possible for me to go. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Isaiah chapter 60, we're going to talk, uh, give you a little bit of a encouragement this morning and, and uh, listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Father, please help us now to open our hearts to your word. Uh, we owe you so much. We owe you so much. And we owe you at least to listen to what's going to be said this morning and then determine to Apply it to our life. Help us to do that today. Thank you for the opportunity to be in church. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Isaiah 60. God's people had, had made a mess of things again because they had failed to do what God told them to do. Isaiah had told them that God could not get involved in their lives because of their sins. And Isaiah 59 talks about this. And you can study Isaiah 59 if you'd like um, on your own there. But in chapter 59, Isaiah lets list some of the things they had done. They had touched things they weren't supposed to. They had lied. <clears throat> they had talked pervertedly. They didn't want truth. They put their trust in vain things. They ang anxiously ran to do evil. They, they think of how they can do iniquity. They walked in darkness like blind men. And Isaiah 59 verses 9 and 10 talks about that. They walked in darkness like blind men. They looked for deliverance through another way other than God. Uh, this is all talks about this in, in Isaiah 59. They were doing wrong and they knew it. They had completely walked away from God. God wanted to remedy the situation, but they didn't want to remedy it, so it couldn't be done. His people were in terrible shape. Now, <clears throat> let me just say this. There is no need for God's people to be living like that. God had a better life for them, a life which we're about to read about in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5. We'll talk about this this morning. I, when I re, as I read the Bible, I'm amazed that God's people would want to live like they were living. I see God ready to bless them. You read about that in the Bible. You read about that in the Old Testament. I see God ready to bless them. <clears throat> I see God ready to use them, <clears throat> use them. And all I see God's people wanting to do is fool around with the world and its sin. What are, what are they thinking about? What we read about a few minutes ago is what they should have been doing all along. I feel sometimes the same way about Christianity today. Uh, you see, God is still ready to bless his people like he was back then. God is still ready to use his people like he was back then. But I still see many of God's people fooling around with the world and its sin. I'm thankful today that I stand before a group of people who I believe are hungry spiritually. And I stand for a group of people, for the most part, want God to use them and are trying to do right. And that makes it a privilege and honor to be your pastor. 
But this morning, let me help you to get that spiritual hunger satisfied. If you're hungry for God, let me help you to, to get that satisfied this morning. Let me help you to be used by God. Let me help you to do right before God. Our scripture gives us exactly what we need in these areas. God was trying to help his people to reach their potential. We'll see that in verse number one. He's trying to help them reach their potential. Verse Isaiah 59, they're messing around. They're fooling around with all this garbage that the world is putting in their path. They're not listening to God. And in Isaiah 60, God's trying to get his people back and get to the point where they can reach their potential. Now look at verse number one. What, here's what God is telling his children. He's telling them, arise. Arise. It means to get up. You're down. You're living down. Uh, because of, you're, You've been down because of sin. And he says, get up. Arise. And God would say the same thing to us today. If you've been messing around with sin and you're down a little bit because of your, your, your struggle with sin, God would tell you to arise. I don't care how many times you've been knocked down or will get knocked down. Keep getting back up. God will help you keep getting back up. What would he tell you if he saw you? He saw that you messed around and failed in your life. He wouldn't say, stay down there. You deserve that. While in the mud for a while. No, he wouldn't say that. He would look at you and say, arise. Get back up. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. We're not supposed to be living a dead life. We're not supposed to be messing around with sin. Sin bringing forth death. No, you're not supposed to have that in your life. But you're better than that. You're, you're, God has saved you, and God doesn't want you wallowing down there in the ditch. He said, I want you to get up. Get up. God has a job for you to do. <laughs> Get up. God has a job for you to do. Because if you stay down, you'll pull others down with you like Jonah almost did. Get up. Hey, God's child, arise. There's a life to live. There's work to do for him. You can't stay down. If you're down this morning, you can't stay down. If you're messing around with sin, hey, that's below you now. You're a child of the king. Arise and live up. To, to be in what you are, and that is a child of the king. Then he says, in verse number one, he also says, shine, shine. This is, he's telling his, his, his people this. You're messing around. He, Isaiah 59 is all about what they were doing, all the garbage they were into, and God says, no, arise, shine. God tells his people to shine. It means to make bright by setting on fire. Shine. <laughs> make yourself bright by setting yourself on fire. The Bible talks about in 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 8. 1 John 2, verse number 8. John was writing here to the to God's people and he said, he said here, again, a new commandment I write unto you that which thing is true in him and, and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Not supposed to be walking in darkness. The darkness of a sinful life is past and Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is now in you, shining out. At least that's the way it's supposed to be. That's what that's the way it will be with someone who really gets a real dose of salvation. Shine. Shine. Get up. Get out of that, that muck and that mire. Get out of the ditch of sin. And, and, and uh, shine. Shine forth. Set yourself forth before the world as a fire that's been lit, lit by God. In Judges chapter 5 and verse number 31. Judges 5.31 it says, So let all thy enemies perish, O Lord. But let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. Watch that. But let them that love him, love the Lord, be as the sun which go, when he goeth forth in his might. God said here that those that love God are to shine brightly as the sun. You know what the sun does? The sun brings warmth to people. The sun brings happiness to people. The sun brings encouragement to people. The sun helps things grow. And that's exactly what God's people were told in the book of Judges. Again, a book that you read about, you just, man, you want to pull your hair out. Why would God's people want to live like this? Why would they live in the depths like they were living? And God, God tells his people here that if you love me, then you want to be as the sun in his might. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be wallowing around in depression and discouragement all the time. We're supposed to rise and shine. We're not supposed to be messing around in the darkness anymore. No, we have the light of the world in us. We accept that Jesus Christ as our Savior. He's the light of the world. And he tells us, like he told his people back in Isaiah's day, arise and shine. 
Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14. You are the light of the world, Jesus told his disciples. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. That's what God, Jesus told his disciples. We are the light of the world, of this darkened world. And this darker world needs to see uh, that, that the light of the world is Jesus Christ. And the only way they're going to see us, see that, is if we shine as lights in the world. Now, <clears throat> why <clears throat> should I do this? Because I should do this because my because I have been enlightened. I have been made to see. I'm not in darkness anymore. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You see, I've been enlightened. Go to Psalm 1828. Psalm 1828. I'm not walking in darkness anymore. <clears throat> Psalm 1820. Uh, the Bible says here in Psalm, I'm sorry, 1828. Thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. That's exactly what God did for me when He saved me. A light went on inside me. The light of the world is Jesus. Psalm 119 and verse 130. Psalm 119, verse number, thir uh, I'm sorry, verse 130. And the Bible says here, in this verse, <clears throat> it says, uh, The entrance of thy words giveth light. There ought to be a light shining in me. And that light shining in me ought to be shining out to the people that are around me. I've been, I've been enlightened. That's why I should arise and shine. I, I don't fit in this dark world anymore. Because I'm not dark anymore. I'm light. Light and darkness don't go together. You see? Why would someone who has light want to mess around with the darkness? And that's what those people did in chapter 59. They're messing around in the darkness. And God said, arise and shine. And if you're messing around in darkness and with sin, if you're messing around with discouragement and depression, God would tell you, arise and shine. You shouldn't do that. Look at Isaiah 29, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 29, and verse 18. God says here, <clears throat> In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You've been enlightened. Been enlightened. I'm not blind. I'm not spiritually blind anymore. I'm not walking, groping around in the spiritual darkness of this world anymore. I've been saved. I've been saved. We saw a lot about that this morning. Uh, we saw a lot about salvation this morning, and we ought to sing about it because it brought us from dark, the darkness of this cruel world into the light of, of, his, of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 17 says that the God of our, of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You see that? We were enlightened by the by the entrance of God's words. We were enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse number six. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse number six. The Bible says here, Second Corinthians four six. For God also who for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have been enlightened. Someone came to us and told us about Jesus and opened our eyes. Like, like what happened to Paul in the book of Acts. You see, we shouldn't be walking around in a dark world. Dark. No. We should be walking around in a dark world shining. We shouldn't be walking around in this dark world discouraged and in the depths of sin like the people around us are. In the depths of discouragement and hopelessness like the people this world live in. No. We should arise. We should be living above all that. We should be living a, a life of hope. We should be offering hope to the world. We should be offering a better way to this world. We should be offering a, a life 
of, of freedom from the power of sin like we have. We should be offering that. But if we're just down and walking around in the darkness and living like, like the world's living, like the people in Isaiah 59 were, that we're not, we're just gonna be, <laughs> we're just gonna be just like everybody else and no one's gonna be able to see our light. It's like a, someone who has a candle and they take a bushel and put it over the candle light and no one gets benefit of that light at all because it's covered. God saved us and left us here so we would shine. We could arise and shine and this world could see the brightness and the light of Jesus Christ. Why should we rise and shine? Because we have been enlightened. Also, we are to shine so others can be drawn to the light. Matthew 5.16 tells us that they will see our good works. They'll see our changed life. We're not living a life of bad works anymore. Now it's a life of good works. That's totally opposite. Good works and bad works are totally opposite of each other. And people will see the difference in the way we used to live and the way we're living now. They'll see it. And we are to show them that. <laughs> we are to show them the, the life that God has, cha- has done, has done, has changed us with. He's given us a new life now. We don't have the old life. So we take this new life and we shine and then we take the opportunity to tell people about what's happened in our life. We bring them an easy to believe salvation. We'll bring them an easy to believe salvation. By the way, we don't believe in, <clears throat> we believe in easy believism in the way that we believe that salvation is easy. It's not hard to get salvation. It was hard to, to purchase it. Jesus had to go through what he had to go through. But for us, Jesus says being saved, it's like going through a door, eating a piece of bread, drinking a glass of water. It's not hard to do any of those three at all. And we'll be able to show them how easy it is for them to be saved and go to heaven. The work's already been done. It's already been paid for. We were talking to a guy yesterday, soul winning, who said he believed he had to make some changes in his life. And then, and then it got to the end, and I showed him everything. But Satan, the Bible is so clear about how Satan has blinded the minds of people. And he still said, well, i got to make some changes first before I accept it. No. I said, no, 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 no. You don't have to make any changes. The changes come because you're saved, not to get you saved. You see, <clears throat> we'll be able to tell them, how easy it is. I'm so thankful. I, 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 you know what I hear? When, you got, when you're out soul winning, one of the things you hear a lot is the world's plans of salvation. There's a lot of them. You've got to get baptized. You've got you to repent of all your sins. In other words, you've got to stop sinning. Uh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to live right. You've got all this kind of stuff. I'm so thankful that my, that my salvation is not based on what I could do. Because, first of all, I know I couldn't do enough. Second of all, I would never know if I did enough. But it's been paid for. It's all done. And we get to tell them about a salvation that's not do, 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 do. We get to tell them about salvation that's done. Done. It's not hard to go to heaven. It's easy. Hey, you, you meet people who really who really want to know. They're really, they're really searching. They really want to know. They really want to go to heaven. And, and they're conscious of the fact according to what most religions teach, that you have to be good to get there. So they're, they're trying to be good. And boy, oh boy, it's such a blessing to be able to say, you know, I got some good news for you. <clears throat> it's a lot. It's the easiest thing in all the world that you'll ever do is to get saved. You'll never do anything easier than that. Oh, it's just accepting a gift. I've never sweat any drops of sweat by receiving a gift. Never have. I mean, people give me many gifts in my life. I've never one time had a huff and puff to get a gift. It's easy. You just take it. You just take it. You see? And with Jesus and his salvation, it's just believe, <clears throat> believe it all, realize you need it, and take it. And you're saved. That's what God says. See? Now, we are to shine so others can see that, that, that what we have is real. We don't have religion, folks. Religion's darkness. That's what that is. Religion is darkness. And we, we're supposed to shine as, as the sun shines, where the, the S-O-N shines, shines, and show them we got something different. If we are the light, God says, walk as children of light. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 8. It says here, For ye, ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. I mean, we ought to be walking around. People ought to uh, see God in our life. People ought to see the, the light, the, the light shining in us. You see, 
we are to shine, arise and shine because God's glory is upon us. God's glory is upon us. God has put the spotlight on us. He's put his glory on us so people can see there is something <clears throat> different about us. We are to shine because God's darkness, uh, the, I'm sorry, gross darkness is upon so many people. Gross means thick. There's, it's so dark out there. It really is. It is so dark. And it's getting darker and darker and darker. But you know what? As it gets darker and darker and darker, we ought to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. We ought to do that. Don't give up. Don't give up on this world. God hasn't given up on it yet. It's still here. Don't give up on people. God hasn't given up on those people yet. He's still going after them. You see what I mean? Don't, don't, don't walk away and say, well, this world's hopeless. No, obviously there's some hope. It's not over yet. If it was all finished, if salvation was all finished, if this world was, God was done with this world, He would end it all. He wouldn't just let it stay here and linger. So, <clears throat> even though this world is gross darkness, we need to shine upon it. Darkness brings no direction. Darkness brings oppression. Darkness brings depression. It causes people to be robbed of the good things that God has planned for their life. We were talking to an older lady yesterday. It was amazing. I mean, she lives in this run-down, dumpy apartment. She's she's raised a family already. She's probably, I guess, probably in her 70s. I was going to say she's she's probably she's older. She's in her 60s. I'm getting in my 60s almost. So that's not old anymore. But um, anyway, um, she's talking. I mean, she was just going on and on and on, talking about one thing and another. And cussing up a storm. I mean, just, just, just talking about how good her family, she raised her family and basically bragging on herself what a great mother she was and, and then cussing up a storm. Unbelievable. And, like, and, and like, like Kel said to me, he said, boy, if, if a woman cussed like that, you wonder what her husband sounded like. And I mean, it's just unbelievable the way that we're, and, and, I, and I looked at her as we were talking to her, and I'm thinking, I mean, she's living in this messy apartment and it's just really, it's sad. She used to live in this nice house uh, not too far from there, but I don't know what happened, just different circumstances. She wound up in this apartment. And they and the, she said the landlord, they, they had done something to the apartment. They're trying to evict her through make, uh, making her apartment. She, they did, some, did something to the apartment that where now she has to get it all, get the odor out of it and all that, or get it, whatever's in there out of it. And Anyway, she's griping and complaining about that. Sad life, just real sad. And I'm thinking, God didn't plan on that for her. This isn't God's path for her. This isn't the way God wanted her to live. What a dark life. What a depressing life. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I mean, man, and she didn't want to hear the message of salvation, and she had all the answers for that. But, man, it's dark. This part, that's just like what the world's like. It's dark. We met so many people out yesterday that, that one door we knocked on, and, and this woman's sitting outside, and she's 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 sitting. I don't know. She had like I don't know, pink hair or whatever it was. And it looked really creaky. I mean, really weird. And so I knocked on the door. She had gone inside. I think she saw us coming, so she went and knocked on. She they all run to us. They run away from us. And so she went in the house and and, and closed the door. And this guy. So I, we got to their door, knocked on the door, and I heard these little kids inside. This little these little children, probably three, five, four, five years old, just running around in the house. And this real Freaky looking guy comes to the door. And I'm thinking, I, I, I closed the door. I said, man, I said to myself, man, I felt so sorry for those kids. What, what are they going to, I thought, what are they going to be like if their parents are like this? What are they going to look like when they get to be adults? If this is the example they have. You see, there's so much darkness out there. It's so it's And it's really gross darkness. And darkness brings spiritual ignorance. And the Bible says it leads to to uh, to falling into a ditch, Jesus talked about in Matthew 15. They have no they have no word from God. It comes from an evil eye. They can't understand light. They'd rather be in darkness. Their life proves they have no fellowship with God. They have no contact with God at all. And we're not supposed to be down there. We're supposed to go to them with our light shining. Not go to them and join them. You see. I mean, I was in darkness. I was blind in darkness. But now I see, and I don't want to go back in to not seeing anymore. 
He has shined the light of the glorious gospel on me. And when I take that, I'm supposed to take that to the dark world. They're supposed to see something different about me. They need the light to shine on them. That's what they need. That's why Christians ought to arise and shine. I mean, don't stay down. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of, there's a lot of depressing things in, in, on this, in this life. There is. You know what? We, really, we could, I guarantee you, we could come here and, and let, let Pierce come up here and do, do his thing, get everybody pumped up and excited and feed off his enthusiasm. I could get up here and just read a list of all the problems in this room and we'd all be, <laughs> oh, wow. we all be depressed by the time we walked out of here. I mean, they're, they're there. We have them. And, and they're real. I mean, they're not, they're not fake. They're real. But you know what? We don't have to. And, and for the average person, that would bring them down and get them discouraged and get them so depressed that they want to go into their room and close the door and pull the covers over their head. <clears throat> but we don't have to live like that. He tells us, okay, he tells us all throughout the scriptures, yeah, you got it rough and there's trials and there's burdens and there's heartaches. And then we have the light. We're supposed to shine the light on this dark world. We need to take the gospel to people who've got the same burdens, the same problems we got, heartaches and troubles, trials like we have, and take them, take them the light of Jesus to them and show them there's hope in this world. <clears throat> God shall come upon us. In Isaiah chapter 60, it says here, For the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. God shall come upon your life, and everyone shall see it. Now you know how to live your life. You don't have to live like these people. People out there, listen folks, they don't know how to live life. They have no idea how to live life. They're just taking a guess. And man, you can tell that they have guessed wrong. Most people have guessed wrong on how to live a quality kind of life. John 8, 12, Jesus said to them, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's the way we're supposed to live. You see that? We know how to live. Man, I know how to live. I know how to live my life. Man, now so if I know how to live it, I need to live it that way then. And if I know how to live it, I need to go out there and show other people how to do it. I mean, I know there's people out there that won't listen. I'm, I, those people that don't listen, and I feel sorry for them, but I'm looking for the people that will. And I'm telling you, over, out of the hundreds and thousands of people that are in this area here, there are people out there that will listen. There are people out there that want to know. They're tired of walking in darkness. They're tired of everything they try. They mess up. Everything they try fails. They're tired of, of all the frustrations of life. They want some hope. And I've got that hope. And I've got to get out there and take that hope to those people. I know how, I know which direction to take in life. I know. I'm not looking for it anymore. I know what it is. I found it. Years ago, there used to be bumper stickers they put on the back of cars. This was in the late 70s. It, it, would, it said simply, I found it. And, of course, it was trying to get people curious. What did you find? And then you tell them about Jesus. You found the answer to life. You found Jesus. You found salvation. John chapter 12, verse 35. The Bible says here, <clears throat> Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness cometh upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not, knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. And I like that word light. I don't like the darkness. And one thing I don't like about about the the time change, you enjoy the extra hour you got, but I don't like the fact that it gets dark now before 5 o'clock. I don't like that. I don't like the darkness. I just don't like dark. I like the light. I like to be around light. I'm telling you, there's so much garbage out there, so much darkness. But, you know, Jesus saved me, and he showed me how to live. He showed me which direction to take. You know what? Now I'm learning the Bible. I'm learning the entrance of thy words giveth light. And the more I let this word into me, the brighter my light will shine. I get to learn the Bible now. I mean, this book that the God of the universe wrote, I get to learn it now. I can understand it. It makes sense to me. You see, <clears throat> God shall come upon your life. 
and people will see it. They can't help but see it. They're going to see something in you. I mean, you know how it is. You, know, you meet people that you, you shake their hand, you talk to them, and you can just tell they're saved. Why? It's like their their countenance is just different. Why? It's Jesus. That's what it is. It's the light shining out of them. That's what it is. You see, now we are we can be fearless. Everyone is seeing these things shine forth out of us as you yield your life to Him. We can shine. God will come upon your life. You see, Philippians chapter 2 talks about working out your own salvation. Letting it come out. Don't just let it stay in you. Work it out. Get it out. Get it out of your life. Do God's will and pleasure. Do everything without murmurings and disputing. Hold forth God's word in your life. As you do that, the light shines and people see. People see it. Second Peter 1.19, <clears throat> the Bible says here, let me read it to you, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 19. It's really sad when you think about the people in, in, in the book of Isaiah. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 19, it says, <clears throat> We also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Till the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. And you feel like that when you, you talk to someone whose life is just so messed up. If you're a Christian living for God and, you, and God has shined forth in your life, you know, you know as you talk to this person, hey, I got some great news if they'll just listen to me. I can, I, I, God can use me. I can tell them things that will turn their whole life around. And instead of living a, a dark life, They'll have hope. They'll, their eyes will be enlightened and they'll see what God can do for them. What God can do with their life and with their family. God shall come upon us. That's how we can rise and shine. We can work out our own salvation. Let it come out of us. Man, I've got this amazing thing inside of me. It's the, it's the gift of eternal life. It's the Holy Spirit of God living inside me. I can't let that stay in there. All that God is doing in me, I need to let it come out. Let other people see it. So I can influence this dark world. <clears throat> Win souls. Spend time with God. Follow Jesus. Give to the poor. There's all verses that talk about how as you do this, your light will shine to people. And by the way, Proverbs 4.18 says, my light should be growing brighter and brighter each day. You see, don't be like God's people messing around in the darkness. Why would you want to go back there? Why would you want to mess around with things things that are dark? Things that are bad. Things that are hopeless. No. Get up. Don't, and don't stay in the world of depression. Listen, there's nothing to be depressed about. What do you have to be depressed about? <clears throat> you have a lot of good things. You have God. <clears throat> and God and all His hundreds and hundreds of promises. The more I shine, the more light I get. Psalm 9711. You live what you are learning. Your light will shine brighter. You shall attract people to your Savior to the degree that you shine. You'll see others all around you, and and you'll see their potential that they have. As you as your light shines, you'll be able to look and see what God can do in other people's lives. You know, I'm, I'm afraid some of us Christians aren't even aware how bad it is. We're not aware of the dark, of the deep, the depths of the darkness that people live in. And we're not even aware that that what we could do. I mean, if you would sit back and say, oh, man, look at what God's done in my life. I, I now have, I know how to live. I've got direction in my life. I can understand the answer book, the instruction book of life. I can understand this. And as I see my family around me, as I see my friends around me, as I see my fellow workers around me, as I go, go out and see the community where I live and I see all this darkness. I mean, folks, listen. You know, look at people. Go to Walmart sometime or where you go grocery shopping and just, just go there, not to buy food, go just to look at people. They're really sad. They're not happy. They're not happy at all. You don't see many people who are smiling at all. Now, you know, well, I'll tell you, the cashiers are really friendly. Well, I've seen two types of friendliness in a cashier. First of all, you see, meet the one who's genuinely, and, and, and usually you find out they're Christian. Then you see the one, they, they teach you how to put it on. 
okay? They teach you how to be friendly. That's part of your job is to be friendly to people. So you're forced into it to be friendly. I'm not talking about that kind of friendliness. I'm not talking about that kind of happiness. This world's just not a happy place to live in right now. An election's not going to change a thing. But we can change it. We can change it one person at a time. That's what we can do. We can look for those people, shine our light on people, and you know what? You'll see someone. The Bible does say that men love darkness rather than light because the deeds are evil. So a lot of people who shine the light on, they'll back off, they'll get away, they'll find the door in your face, they'll tell you're not interested. But you'll be looking for, you'll find that one person that wants that light. I'm tired of being in the darkness. I'm tired of not knowing how to live. I'm tired of not knowing what direction to take in my life. I'm tired of, of, of just every day hoping it'll get better, but it never does. I want something that's real. I want something that's true. And folks, we have that. We have that. That's why God told his people, you know, why, why are you messing around with, with all that junk? Why are you all around the darkness with the heathen? I mean, you, you, God told his people over and over again, stay away from those people. They're going to be thorns in your eye, pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side. Stay away from those people. They're going to bring you down into their darkness. And that's exactly what the people did. They didn't stay away. They thought they knew better. So they, they hung around the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd pulled them down. And you have Isaiah 59 and a lot of other chapters that talks about the mess that God's people were in. And so God is coming to them and saying, you know what? Why don't you just get up and shine like you ought to be shining. I've come upon you. And if you really met Jesus, you're not in darkness anymore. Paul told God's people in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I want to read that to you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 <coughs> says here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5, it says, we are, You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You see? We are children of light. Arise and shine, Christian. Don't stay down there in the with the depressed people. Don't stay down there with the people who are who are have no direction, who have no hope, don't know how to live their life. Don't stay down there with them. No, don't live down there with them. Now go to them and try to find one that'll listen, but don't live down there with them. You see, you are to walk as children of light. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. We who know this, know Christ the Savior, who are God's people, must arise. We must get up, not stay down. We must shine or be on fire for God so others will come to Christ and be attracted to us. Just kind of like Moses was attracted to that bush that was burning. People ought to be attracted to us because they see what's burning in our life. God has come upon us. I'm glad. I'm thankful. And I praise his holy name that my wife saw something different in me. I'm thankful that my family saw something different in me. I'm thankful the people I worked with at, <coughs> at WW w. Granger when I loaded trucks. Right? This is right after I got saved. I was working at WW w. Granger loading trucks in the warehouse. I'm thankful those, those filthy mouth guys saw something different in me. I didn't have to preach a lot to them. I talked to them. They knew I was a Christian, but they just saw something different in me. I'm thankful. That was the light. I was in darkness. I, I would I would fit right in with them before I got saved. I mean, I'd just right there with them and everything. When I got saved, something changed. You know, And, and now, <clears throat> there, there was a light. By the way, that's why a lot of them didn't want to be around me. Like that one time, guy, a guy came up to me and he had a he had a really bad magazine, and he said, "Hey, you want to look at?" No, you don't. And he just backed away. I'm thankful for that. He he came up to the light with his darkness, and he says, "No, no, no, no." no. But I go up to him with my light and try to tell him about my light. What, what's making me shine? I'm not shining because I'm this bright, happy, sunshine guy. I'm shining because Jesus, I have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you should be shining too. 
no time to be depressed and discouraged and down in, in, the, in the dark world. Arise, get up. No time to mess around with their filth and their garbage. Lower yourself to that kind of level of living. No, arise and shine. Let people see Jesus in you. Let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you so much that you have <coughs> come upon us. You have come upon us. The Bible says that. The Lord has risen upon thee. The Lord shall rise upon thee. Wow. And because you've come upon us, no longer are we living in darkness. We, have, we, are, we are the light of the world, he tell, you call us now. Because we have the light, Jesus Christ, in us. Thank you for that. <clears throat> and Lord, help us to sh- arise and shine. This morning we need to look at our life to see if, if our life is controlled by depressing things, discouraging things. That we frown a lot more than we smile. We complain a lot more than we praise. Help us to be honest with our life and check that out. And then, if that's the case, follow what God told the, his people in Isaiah 60 to arise. Get up. Get out of that ditch. Get out of that, <clears throat> that, that, that uh, low life you're living. And shine like a Christian should shine. A lot to shine about. We have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Savior to show others. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is purpose. He is contentment. He is forgiveness. He is grace. He is mercy. Wow. No need for darkness to be a part of our life. We've got the light of Christ. Help us to shine in this dark world. Use us, Lord, and take us to people that won't run from the light but want to come to the light because they're tired of their life. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm wondering this morning, do you have Jesus as your Savior? Or are you walking in darkness? Do you have, do you know how to live? Do you know how to live your life? Do you know what direction to take in your life? Has God come upon you? Has Jesus Christ saved you and given you eternal life? How many say this morning, Pastor, you know what? I, As I sit here this morning, I don't know for sure that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. I don't know for sure if I have Jesus as my Savior or not. I'm not 100% sure. I'd like to be sure, but I'm not. If anybody like that, raise your hand. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I'd like to be sure, but I'm not sure. How many say, Pastor, I remember when Jesus Christ, I was walking in darkness. I was a sinner on the way to hell. I knew that. <clears throat> and I was... And I was um, Going nowhere with my life, just kind of groping around and not not knowing what was going to be next. Kind of just taking a chance each day, hoping things will get better. And then one day, somebody told me about the light of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, Jesus, and I accepted Him as my Savior. And that day, I was saved forever, and I knew it. And I still know it today. I know for sure I'm going to go to heaven when I die because I have Jesus as my Savior. If that's you, to raise your hand. Let me see. That's good. Give me all your hands. In just a moment, we're going to have a song of invitation. If for some reason you have any doubts in your mind, in your heart about your salvation, you're not sure you're going to heaven, now is a good time to get it settled once and for all. Just come up and tell me, Pastor, I'd like to see from the Bible how I can go to heaven when I die. We'll be glad to have somebody take you and show you that. If you are saved, maybe you need to make a public decision. Maybe you need to let people know you've been saved. Maybe you need to get baptized. You come up and tell Brother Kevin, I'd like to let people know I've been saved. Or maybe you need to get baptized. Tell Kevin, I'd like to get baptized. Or maybe you want to join the church. Come up and tell Brother Kevin I'd like to join the church. If God spoke to your heart, Christian, and you know you've kind of been living in the darkness a little bit, messing around with things you shouldn't be messing around with, maybe living a life of depression and discouragement and, and, and not shining like you ought to, maybe you, you come to an old-fashioned altar this morning and you're going to tell God, God, you know you told your people back in Isaiah's day, arise and shine, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up. And I'm going to shine like a Christian ought to shine. I'm going to let people start seeing that I'm different. I'm changed. That I have God. I have Jesus in my life. I'm going to shine forth. And, and then, then come and ask God to take you to people that aren't going to run from the dark, from the light, but they want to hear about the light of the world. Ask God to use you to help people come out of the darkness. Let's all stand. You obey the Holy Spirit and do what he says as the song begins.